Manas, everybody knows quantum physics has a profound effect on how we understand reality. Uh, you've really developed this uh, in depth. Uh, explain to me how quantum physics works. What are the core principles of quantum physics? And then we'll go into implications. So one of the core principles of quantum physics is complementarity. It's a long word, but really what it means is not exactly the opposites are always separate, but if you like dichotomy or opposition, yes. However, also union, yes. In other words, if I can put it in a very simple sentence, it will be this and or that. This being the opposite of the, that in ordinary experience. Opposite is key. Opposite is key, but not exclusive opposition. Not exclusive. They are still related to each other. Classically, it's a wave and a particle that a photon, the element of light, is two things that seem to be completely different. Completely different. And in fact, that argument goes back to the time of Huygens and Isaac Newton. Uh, Huygens was saying that uh, light is waves, and Newton actually was the first quantum physicist and said, no, it's actually made of particles, individual chunks of energy. Which and, is the concept of quantum. Which is the concept of quantum. And today we know that actually it is both, but not at the same time. So in complementarity, you have the opposites in relation to each other, but they don't apply under exactly the same conditions, but yeah. they're always there. I'm not sure it's not at the same time. It is at the same time, but it's a different, when you measure, it changes the nature of what, it. You're correct. When you say at the same time, you don't really mean time and time, <laughs> right, but right, mean right, right. under the same circumstances. Right, 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 right. So they are not, they do not apply under exactly the same conditions. Okay. So that's complementary. That's complementary. Okay. What else? The second one is indeterminacy or uncertainty. Mm. So we, uh, the public, believes, and we scientists have sort of enforced it or reinforced it over the last several centuries, that the universe is knowable. We can know it a hundred percent. If only we had enough information, if only we had enough experiments, if we only spent enough money <laughs> on looking at the universe, we could find the answers down to hundred percent accuracy. Well, today we know from quantum theory that this impossible. That in fact there is a built-in indeterminacy or built-in uncertainty in the world of the quantum. This is called the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And it's very fundamental. It actually derives in a way from the complementarity of wave and particles. But it is also very profound because it is so foreign to our everyday view of the world. So even though our mathematics can be extremely precise and getting better all the time and describing the world through mathematics, still, in principle, you're saying, it's impossible to know everything. In principle, not just in practice. Yeah. That is important difference. It's impossible to know everything with 100% certainty. So. So does that mean that physical theory through mathematics yeah. cannot represent physical reality? It means that there are limits to what theory can describe what we call physical reality. There are limits, inherent limits. They cannot be taken away. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what's the third principle of uh, quantum physics? The third principle, also derivable in a way from the first principle, is entanglement. But it has its own distinct properties it's distinct flavor, so that's why it's so interesting. Entanglement is what allows particles across space and time to be related to each other, to act as a one system, even though they're made, that system is made of multiple parts. So we say the parts are entangled with each other. And this creates a non-locality. This is, creates a non-locality, and you have a quantum system, quantum states, as we call it, in other words, specific properties that the particles have been put under, you know, in an in experiment, that persist even when those conditions have changed. 
which is very strange. So given all three, complementarity, waves and particles at the same time, indeterminacy, we can't know precisely what the physical reality is, and entanglement where you have this non-locality. What are the implications of all of that for all aspects of knowledge, reality? So the implications are that knowledge that at least we can acquire with laboratory experiments and equipment, which are really the extensions of our senses, if you want to put it that way, is limited. Our, that knowledge cannot get down, quote unquote, to everything that is under there, under our eyes. There are limits to our knowledge. So what does that imply for biology or the nature of brain-mind, all of these big topics that we like to talk about? So in terms of biology, it would take in complementarity, if indeed it applies there. And Bohr, Niels Bohr, the founder of complementarity, believed that indeed it applies to biology, biological systems. If it applies to biology, then it would say that there are constructs that appear to be opposite to each other, but they're always there. For example, one would be, you know, a, this, the tendency of uh, systems, uh, of organisms to compete with each other, mm. right? That is competition, that's what drives evolution. At the same time, there's symbiosis, there's the- Cooperative activity. Cooperative cooperation. A system, biological systems can survive if they're only in opposition to each other they eventually kill each other, right? So there's also cooperations. And we see that, for example, in, in tropical forests or in large ecosystems. So that would be one case, for example, where complementarity applies. But is it really fair to take something on such a micro level in quantum physics, the complementarity of waves and particles of a, of a photon, a, an element of light, uh, and, and use that as a justification for something the, the difference between competition and cooperation. and the, yeah, you, you can say those are general principles of how th human language can understand things, but to say one is derivative from the other, is that, a, is that a, a, a jump too far? I would say it's not necessarily a derivative from each other, but it is a, manif a different manifestation. In my view, those principles... Is, that, is that a manifestation of reality or a manifestation, manifestation just of the human way of understanding things? It's a big difference. Uh, well, actually, we will come back to this in just a second, because it's a good question you're posing. Is it really a reality independent of what we observe? Okay, that's, is reality real without that observation? But let's just take one step back. If it is a different manifestation, then it means that perhaps these principles are universal. They apply at every level.